Hello friends, as you all are aware, we have started new sections on our YouTube channel uh, like uh, graph based discussion, clinical case based discussion. Uh, it would be for first prof as well as most useful for even need PG or entrance exam preparation. So uh, before we proceed further, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. Now let's see uh, what uh, is the clinical case for today. A 30 year old male approached the hospital OPD with complaints of weight loss. Now that's the presenting complaint or chief complaint and changes in vision, changes in the vision. All right, these are the chief complaints or let's say presenting symptoms. Now he feels a uh, tremulousness of the hands and palpitations at night. Tremulousness of the hands and palpitations at night. Uh, this is indicative of some kind of an increased sympathetic drive. But let's see what other uh, symptoms are. Uh, with disturbed sleep pattern, with disturbed sleep pattern, his appetite has increased. Now that's interesting. His appetite has increased as the patient uh, himself uh, says. But there is no apparent change in the thirst. When uh, the clinician inquired about the thirst, do you feel thirsty? The patient said no. Um, so, blood pressure 146 by 92. That could be borderline high or that is high. And uh, random blood sugar 180 milligrams per cent. Again, it is less than 200. So, uh, let's say again borderline acceptable. What could be the most likely uh, diagnosis? That is the case. And let's see the options for our PG entrance preparation. And also then uh, we will also have a look at the questions that can be asked at the first prof level. 10 marks question. Okay. Here are the options. Type 2 diabetes mellitus or Cushing's disease or thyrotoxicosis or pe peptic ulcer. You want to answer that? Here are the options. Answered. Let's check it out. Uh, okay, if you want the answer first, up front, the answer is thyrotoxicosis. Now let's check out why the other options are ruled out and then we will talk about the thyrotoxicosis. There is increased appetite. Fine. Uh, in peptic ulcers also some patients complain of increased appetite. Uh, type 2 diabetes mellitus, uh, there is hyperphagia, so pointing towards that. But then there is no change in the thirst. You know the classic triad of diabetes mellitus uh, is uh, polyphagia, polydipsia and polyuria. Polyphagia, excessive appetite, increased appetite, that is there. But there is no increased thirst. There is disturbed disturb sleep pattern, but not because of the polyuria. Patient is not complaining that he has to get up four or five times through the night. That's not the cause of his di disturbed sleep pattern. And random, random blood sugar is a borderline. So looking at all of this picture, uh, it doesn't appear to be a case of type 2 diabetes mellitus. Many of the symptoms are not quite confirmative uh, related to the uh, diabetes mellitus. Then uh, increase appetite, disturb sleep, but no pain in abdomen. Look, uh, peptic ulcer patients, particularly uh, duodenal ulcer patients are known to uh, get up in the middle of the night, let's 2 a.m. in the morning. Uh, that is when the stomach and the first part of duodenum becomes empty and the pain in abdomen starts. But there is no such complaint of pain in abdomen causing disturbed uh, symptoms. There is no vomiting, there is no pain in abdomen. So it doesn't, uh, it doesn't go in the favor of peptic ulcer as well. Weight loss, but no changes in the body composition. Well, our option was Cushing's disease. And you know, in the Cushing's disease, there is a definitive pattern of changes in uh, body composition moon face, protuberant belly, but thin limbs, centripetal redistribution of fat and uh, breakdown of proteins. That's not uh, the case here. Uh, there is no apparent change in the body composition as described by the patient. And therefore, ruling out all these, 
द मोस्ट लाइकली डायग्नोसिस अपियर्स टू बी थारोटॉक्सिकोसिस सो दैट वॉज फॉर द एम सी क्यू पार्ट नाउ लेट सी इफ यू आर अ फर्स्ट प्रॉप स्टूडेंट एंड प्रिपेयरिंग फॉर योर प्रॉप एग्जाम दीज कुड बी द क्वेश्चन विच कैन बी आस्क मोस्ट लाइकली डायग्नोसिस अगेन यू आर नॉट एक्सपेक्टेड टू डायग्नोज द कंडीशन बट यू कैन थिंक अबाउट द सिम्टम्स एंड कम टू ए लाइकली कंक्लूजन एंड वाई दैट मोस्ट लाइकली डायग्नोसिस इफ दैट इज द क्वेश्चन देन यू कैन राइट डाउन ऑल दीज थिंग्स विच वी मैंशन जस्ट नाउ रूल आउट द अदर ऑप्शन एंड वाई इट इज गोइंग इन द फेवर ऑफ थारोटॉक्सिकोसिस so uh, let's check it out why uh weight loss in the presence of voracious appetite is a hallmark of thyrotoxicosis now uh, there is hyperthyroidism and uh, associated with toxic manifestations that is what is called as thyrotoxicosis so what we should keep in mind is the increased thyroxin uh, secretion there is hyperthyroidism and most of the manifestations can be explained on the basis of this so uh, but remember this fact increase appetite but loss of weight that's a uh, very classic of thyrotoxicosis because there is increase in the bmr this is where you can explain if it's a 10 marks question that because the metabolic rate has increased even though energy consumption has increased but energy uh, uh, i mean uh, intake has increased but uh, loss of energy or energy expenditure is much more and therefore the patient is losing weight uh, talking about the vision changes uh, if you have read of graves ophthalmopathy well in graves disease it is known that uh, there are uh, there are two things that happen uh, related to the vision changes one is there is a deposition of fat and fluid in the retrobulbar space you will have to write it in a, a 10 marks question so the eyeball is pushed forward resulting in what is called as exophthalmos x of thalmos of thalmos is i x is outward protrusion or forward protrusion of the eyeball so that's one point and along with that there is degeneration of extra ocular muscles of the eyeball and because of these two things there are there is a possibility of vision changes for a moment one could have thought of uh, diabetic retinopathy resulting in the vision changes or any other uh, disease that can cause no uh, diabetic retinopathy was one possibility but remember diabetes is a disease of duration that's how it is described Uh, for particularly for first prop students diabetes is a disease of duration longer the duration more likely are the complications so the neuropathy retinopathy nephropathy all these complications are uh, possible only with or, or are uh, observed only with the longer duration of the disease and that's not the case here the patient is complaining these things of the recent onset all right so vision changes explained and then tremors and palpitations there are tremors in uh, tremors of the outstretched hands uh, typically seen in thyrotoxicosis and palpitations or sleeping heart rate more than 90 beats per minute these are called as a toxic manifestations in hyperthyroidism remember hyperthyroidism associated with toxic manifestations is when you call it thyrotoxicosis and uh, particularly here why these uh, manifestations are observed is because of the permissive action of the thyroxin on the catecholamines so excessive sympathetic discharge or excessive circulating catecholamines they will increase the heart rate uh, giving the feeling of palpitations and tremors now this is important uh, sympathetic discharge or catecholamines they act via the beta receptors in the skeletal muscle to be more precise beta 2 receptors are found in the muscle so catecholamine action via beta receptors is responsible for the tremors of the hands remember in the treatment uh, they give beta blockers like propranolol uh, to relieve these particular symptoms 
right insomnia also uh, is one of the manifestations mentioned here disturbed sleep pattern uh, but to be more precise there will be insomnia and that is because in hyperthyroidism remember thyroid hormone in known to increase the synaptic excitability neuronal excitability and synaptic excitability both are increased by the thyroid uh, when there is excessive thyroid secretion thyroid hormone secretion and because of that uh, there will be insomnia you remember uh, you know this uh, physiologically uh, cortical neuronal activity has to decrease if you want to fall asleep so if the neurons are firing excessively it will result in the insomnia on the other hand uh, hypothyroidism results in decreased neuronal and synaptic excitability resulting in excessive sleepiness so that was the case uh, for discussion any other point that uh, is a pointer blood pressure is borderline elevated again uh, an effect of uh, the permissive action on the catecholamines blood sugar has increased uh, that's because of the increased metabolic rate and increased uh, your carbohydrate metabolism that can increase the blood glucose but not as much as a frank diabetes so therefore uh, that was the explanation to the manifestations of this patient and these questions can be asked for 10 marks where you got to explain the symptoms and finally what could be the lab findings so uh, most commonly done are the t3 t4 ts tsh uh, t3 and t4 will increase and by negative feedback the tsh levels will decrease that's classically seen in this particular condition apart from that uh, radio iodine uh, uh, radio iodine uptake and other uh, lab investigations are done uh, you can also perform other investigations like uh, fasting and postprandial blood sugar to rule out the diabetes mellitus uh, or morning 8 am cortisol levels to rule out the cushing's disease and uh, peptic ulcer of course uh, there are uh, very different types of uh, investigations so this was the case for this particular video many more such cases will come on regular basis so do subscribe to the channel